Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf, which is Erevin Samachtes. We are on the bottom of Samachtes on our base. Two lines from the very bottom. It says the Gemara, Omar Mar, and this is in reference to the incident where there was a Tzaduki residing in the Mavi together with Rav Gamliel's family. And he did bittle to them. He relinquished his usage rights of the Mavi, thereby allowing him to carry throughout the Mavi. And the Gemara told us that Rav Gamliel instructed his sons that they should quickly use the Mavi the first point of Shabbos, they should go be machzik in the Mavi, make use of it. And by doing so, they're going to acquire the, the usage rights of the Mavi. They're going to gain possession of the Mavi. And this will prevent the Tzaduki from going back on his word and reattaining possession of his part in the Mavi. So Rangel instructed him as follows. Says the Ma'am Master, we just learned, Ha'itziu ma'ashatem ha'itziin. He told the sons, take out whatever you need to take out into the Mavi. Bring in whatever you need, meaning, make use of the Mavi. Do it quickly, at the first point of Shabbos. Why? Because you meant to beat the Tztuki to it. Do it before the Tztuki. Before this toy of this undesirable fellow. will do likewise. We might see his things into the Mavi. And by doing so, he's going to regain his rights, his usage rights of the Mavi. And it's going to make it usher on you because the bittle will become terminated. So therefore, beat him to it. Make sure that you use the mavi before he does. And Rashi points out, specifically, it needs to be done on Shabbos. So make sure to use it at the first point of Shabbos. So you machzak the mavi and prevent him from regaining possession of the mavi. Says the Does that really work? Lememer, do you mean to say the chimapki? When they take out, and then afterwards he takes out. Like also, he doesn't make it also. He can't regain his rights to the moment. But not. We learned in the mission. Mission also reshus A person, as I was speaking about a typical case, a Yisrael who didn't participate in the Arab, so now he wants to do bittel. So he gave away his usage rights to the fellow chutzer members here. Once he does that, he's not meant to. Transfer something from his house to the, the Chatzar. Let's say he did that. He was not and he transferred something from his house to the Chatzar. Whether he did it, we consider it as though he regained his, uh, his rights, his usage rights of the, of the Chatzar. He took it back. And by doing so, he terminates the Bittal. And now, all the members of the Schatzer can no longer carry in the Schatzer. So what do we see here? That even after Bittel, one has the ability to regain possession of that property. Om Rav Yosef, Ema Eina Oyser. Okay, let's amend that Mishnah. That this fellow who took something out, Eina Oyser, he doesn't make it also because once he did Bittel, it's theirs, he can no longer regain the... Um, Reattain the usage rights to this uh, chatzar. The bittul remains in place and intact. Abaye Omar Kasha. The answer is as follows. It depends on the circumstance. The case of Rav Gamliel is totally different than the story in that Mishnah. Kan shechziku b'nei mavi b'mavi. We're speaking about a case where the b'nei mavi, meaning Rav Gamliel's family, were machzik in the mavi. They acquired the mavi. They gained possession of the mavi. They used it before this fellow. In this case, the person who did bittel can't go ahead and take it back. It's already theirs. Kan shalayechziku b'nemova b'mavi. In contrast to that Mishnah, which is speaking about a case where a person did bittel, but the recipients of the bittel hadn't yet been machzik in that property. They were not machzik. The b'nemovi were not machzik in the mavi. In which case, he has the ability to take it back. And therefore, the Mishnah says. If he did bit on them, immediately was mighty. By doing so, he regains possession and it makes it usher upon all because the bittal has been terminated. Vatanya. As we find in a Brisa, we find this concept in the following Brisa. So the Brisa begins by discussing a halacha which is really unrelated at this point. And towards the end, we'll conclude with this concept that if the the recipients of the bittal did chazaka, that prevents the 
the the um, from regaining possession. Brisa begins as follows: Let's say a person resides in a chaser did not participate in the eruv, so he can do bittel. Let's say he hadn't yet done bittel. He went ahead and he was mighty something into the chatz. He wasn't allowed to. He was doing an iser, mechilu shamas, midrabanan. So what happens there? Bein b'shoigig bein b'mezid yachalavat. Whether he was mighty b'shoigig, or even if he did the iser b'mezid, he's still considered to be like a standard, typical Yisrael, and he has the ability to be mevatel, even though he was mechilu shamas. That's the sheet that Rameir holds that Yisrael is still Yisrael, and therefore. Even if he doesn't personally conform with halachas of Shabbos, he was moitzi. He was he took something to the chutzner when he wasn't meant to. Even if he did it, but it. He's still considered to be strong. He has the bittel option that he can do. Rabbi Da'imer, no. B'shogi yachlevat. If he did this b'shogi, he was mechal Shabbos inadvertently. Fine. Then he's still considered to be a person who has the ability to make bittel. He still has, has a din of a full fledged Yisrael. But if he took the item out into the chutzpah, b'meizid knowingly, he was mechal shabbos b'meizid. This fellow doesn't have the ability to make bittel any longer, because according to Rabbi Yehuda, bittel is only provided for a person who conforms with hilchas shabbos. Chachamim provided bittel as an option B, as an alternative for eruv. It's not meant as a primary option. It's meant to do eruv. But as an alternative, they, they provided bittel as well. So a person who conforms to Hilchah Shabbos, yeah, in that case, he's a, he's a Shemir Shabbos, and just as he has Erev, he has bittel as well. A person doesn't conform to Hilchah Shabbos, such in this case where he's being mighty, he's, he's being over on Hilchah Shabbos, be amazed. This fellow is classified, at least when it comes to these halachas, like, like a nachri. You can only do schiris from him. He doesn't have the option of bittel. He doesn't conform to Erev. So he doesn't have that alternative as well. He can't go ahead and just use bittel. Bittel is not meant as a primary option. So therefore, if he doesn't involve himself with Erev, he doesn't have bittel as well. So that's the first halach. Contra Reb Meir, even a Machal Shabbos has bittel, because he's Yisrael. Contra Reb Yudah, a Machal Shabbos, amazed, does not have a bittel option any longer. That's the first portion of the Brisa. Then the Brayse concludes with a halacha that pertains to our discussion. Misha Nasan Rishus of Haitzi, a person actually was Mavatal's Rishus. So now you have to be careful not to be mighty anything into the Chatzar because by using the Chatzar he's going to be regaining his rights. He's going to terminate that bit. So Misha Nasan Rishus of Haitzi, Bein Bishoygi Bein Mamez, Aitzer. He makes it Aser upon the other members because he retained his property. If he did a bemezid, fine. That's considered to be a person who regained his, uh, his usage rights. But he did it inadvertently. He had no kavana to do that. Therefore, he does not oiser. he's not oiser on the other members. We discuss this on the Samaches, according to our mayor. Um, we make a knas, just as we applied Salach to Mezid, we extend it to Shaykh as well. Show you auto it, so that one doesn't lead to the next. Rabbi Yudha holds this halacha is specific to to it when he did it willingly and knowingly. But be showing you, there's no reason to make it also because he had no kavan of of really causing uh, trouble here, of reattaining the usage rights to the chutzner, and therefore in this case we don't consider it as though the bittel has been terminated and he doesn't make it also upon them. Okay, that's the first portion of this halacha. Concludes the brayse, and this pertains to us. When? When is this halacha said? That if a person uses the chatzar after bittel, that bittel becomes bottle, and it's as though he reattained his usage rights, reattained possession. That's only That's only when the b'nei mavi had not yet been machzak in the mavi. They hadn't yet used the mavi. They didn't gain complete possession of the mavi. So then, he has the ability to take it back. But if the fellow is living in the Mavi, will Machzik in the Mavi before he had a chance to use it? In this case, there's no harm. 
Bein b'shoyik or bein b'meizid any oisid. Whether he transfers something to the mummy, b'shoyik or b'meizid, there's no concern. Because once it's theirs, once they were maxik, he no longer has the ability to take it back. And indeed, this is consistent with Abayas Teretz, that came to explain the story of Thrawn and Blil, where they were maxik the mummy first. And therefore, that prevented the Tztuki from ever taking it back during Shabbos. Because once they are machzik in the mummy, he has no longer the ability to take it back. So even if, if, even if he decides to use it, it still belongs to them for the rest of Shabbos. Continues the Gemara, Omar So getting back to that discussion, there's a Brisa that described the story with the Tztuki who lived in the mummy. And there were two versions of the story. Rabbi Meir told us that according to Rabbi Gamliel, Bittel was activated, and therefore he instructed his sons to quickly use the Mavi to gain possession of the Mavi to Machzik, which will prevent the Tztuki from taking it back. However, Rabbi Yehuda maintained that Bittel cannot apply to a Tztuki. Tztuki doesn't conform to his halachis, doesn't have the Bittel option, which is intended strictly for a person who conforms, who follows Hilchas Erev. So he's given two options, Erev and Bittl, as an alternative. But, Bittl is not meant as a primary option. And therefore, a person who doesn't follow Erev, doesn't have Bittl. That's a sheet of Rabbi Yudah. So this Stuki could not have done Bittl. And therefore, Rabbi Yudah says that Rabbi Yudah's instruction to his son, his sons, was as follows. Go quickly use the, the Mavi before Shabbos comes, because once Shabbos arrives, it gets dark. You can no longer use the Mavi. Because there was no Bittal done, and apparently there was no Schiris done as, as well. So you can only use it up until Shabbos. So the Gemara here is going, to, going back to that uh, statement of Rabbi Amamar. So we learned earlier, Rabbi Yudah, Belash Nacheres, instruction to his sons was actually employing a different type of language than Rameyah's version. He said as follows, Maru, hurry up, and use the Mavi, and this Tzuki is going to make things also upon you. So this is the end quote of Rabbi Yudah. Says the more, Alma Nochriu, apparently, Rabbi Yudah holds that a Tzuki is like a guy. He doesn't have a Bittal option available. The only thing that works is Schirus. Is that the case? We seem to have a Kasha from our Mishnah, although in the beginning of the Perak, Vanan, Vanan, But according to our version in the Mishnah, Rabbi Yudah describes the story with Ram Gamliel as follows. He told the sons, look, you can use the Mavi, even on Shabbos, because apparently there was Bittal here. Use it, but up until the Tztuki uses it. Before he is Moitzi, his things into the Mavi. Because once he uses the Mavi, what happens is, he gets it back. As Rashi points out, Rabbi Yudah doesn't agree with this whole concept of Chazaka, meaning even after they use it and gain possession of the, of the Mavi, he still has the ability to take it back. But pertaining to us here, it's pretty clear that even according to Rabbi Yudah, there was Bittal here. There was Bittal, which allowed everybody to carry on Shabbos itself, but only up until the point where the Stuki uses the Mavi. Because then he takes it back. So apparently, according to Rabbi Yudah, Bittal works even by Tztuki, which is inconsistent with uh, Rabbi Yehuda and the Brisa, that Tztuki cannot do Bittal. Says the Gemara, Ema, Let's amend and reinterpret the Mishnah. Rather than Achaloyoitzi being in reference to the Tztuki, you can carry on Shabbos up until the point that the Tztuki is mighty, his things into the Mavi. It is referring to Friday. You can carry, you can use the Mavi up until when Friday leaves us, meaning up until Shabbos. You can't use the Mavi on Shabbos, it's off limits. Because there's no Bittal here. Bittal doesn't work by its Tzuki. And it's consistent with the reviews in the price. People are the same, another terror. It's like Kash. The answer is as follows. We're speaking on two different types of Tzuki. Khan be mumar l'chal Shabbos is betzina. The Mishnah, which indicates that a Tzuki can do Bittal, is speaking about a Mumar, a person who is over Averis on a regular basis. So this 
habitual transgressor is being Mechal Shabbos, it's only B'tzina, only privately. He does it quietly. In which case, he didn't entirely disregard the concept of Shabbos. And therefore, we regard him as a Yisrael in the context of, uh, of Halachas, of Erev and Bittal. And he can do Bittal. In contrast to the Brisa here, that tells us that a Tzuki cannot do Bittal, which is speaking about Khan be Mumar Lechal Shabbos is far hesir. He's a mummer to be Mechal Shabbos publicly. Flagrantly. In which case, he's totally disregarded Shemir Shabbos and he cannot be allowed to do Bittal. He's disqualified from Bittal. Apparently when it comes to Shabbos, which is meant to be a, a testimony to Hashem's creation of the world, the uh, publicity aspect plays a uh, vital role here. And therefore, if a person is merely doing it with sinner, as bad as it is, but he's not totally disregarding the concept of Shabbos. And therefore, he's still allowed to do bittel. Whereas a person who's Mechal Shabbos is for Hesia, he's totally disregarded Shabbos, and he can no longer have the privilege of doing bittel. So the Mishnah is speaking about one case, where even according to Abiyuda, it's Tuki, can do bittel. The Bryce is speaking about a different case. Says them, or Keman Azla Hadasanya, in accordance with whose shita is the following Bryce. Bryce says, Mumar, this is the habitual transgressor, Vigili Panam. Rashi says, this is a chatzaf, a disrespectful fellow. Any of these two people cannot do bitl rishus. Says them, one second, Gili Panam Mumaru? That's because a person is disrespectful. You regard him as a Mumar, and he's disqualified from bitl. Uh, maybe he's not a nice person, but what is that? What is that? Uh, how does that pertain to Hilchas Bittel and Hilchas Erev? Says the Gemara Ella. Rather, we're speaking about one and the same person. Mumer begili panim any ochel vatlishus. If a person is a mumer, he habitually is over on Shabbos. Begili panim. He does it with chutzpah, disrespectfully, meaning he does it publicly with Hesia. He can no longer have bittel privileges. Kiman krabiud. Apparently, it's following Shitzur Behuda that holds that a mummer l'chal Shabbos for Hesia cannot do bittal. Whereas, according to a mayor, even this type of person would be able to do bittal. Continues the Gemara with the story. Ahu Gavra the Nafak, there was this fellow that went out and just robbed him carrying the Chumrasa the Medusha, the bundle of a fragrant of Psamim, and it's considered to be a Masa, a load on Shabbos. So he's carrying it in the street. Even the Chazi, the Rabbi Yudin as soon as he saw Rabbi Yudin Kasi, he quickly covered it out of shame. Omar, so Rabbi Yudin Nasiyah responded, This is an example of a fellow who has the ability to do Bittal Rishus according to Rabbi Yudin because although he's being Mechal Shabbos, but he's embarrassed of it. And therefore, it's considered to be only Mechal Shabbos but Sina, and we regard him as a Yisrael in the context of Bittal Rishus. So in summation, we have three machlekes between Rameh and Rabid. Firstly, regarding a Mechal Shabbos. So all agree that a Tzuki or a Mechal Shabbos, if they're doing a bit sinna, then they have bitter privileges. But a Mechal Shabbos and Farhesya, according to Rameh, there too, he's considered a Yisro, he gives him Vatal Rishos. According to Rabid, this fellow cannot be Vatal Rishos. We have another machlekes between Rameh and Rabid in the following case. If a person was with Vatal Rishos, and then he went ahead and transferred something into the Chatzah. He's not meant to do that, because he had already given away the Rishos. So if he did a B'mezid, according to both Rabbi and Arab Yudah, we regard as though he reattained the, the possession of the Chatzah, and terminated the Bittal, and makes it Asr upon them all. He only did a B'shayig. According to Rabbi here as well, he is Oyser. We apply the same Allah of Mezid to Shayig, Going to Abuda, since it's only Bishagig, we don't regard it as though he regained possession of the Chatzar, and he doesn't make it an Asr upon them all. We have one last Machalik, is regarding a case where a person was Mavatal, and uh, the recipients were Machsik in the Rishos, and then the Mavatal was Moitzi and used their Rishos. Going to a mayor, it doesn't make it Asr, because since they acquired possession of the property which he was Mavatal, he no longer has the ability to take it back. According to Abiyuda, even in this case, he has the ability to take it back, and if he does so, he's oyster upon them all. 
Continues the Gemara, Amar Rav Huna, Ezeu Yisrael Mumer. How exactly does one describe a Yisrael Mumer? So the Mumer is this fellow who habitually is over Averis, and this pertains to many halachas in, in Shas. He's not to be trusted for things. So what exactly has he done wrong to get this uh, this title? Zamachal Shabbos is with It's referring to a person who's Machal Shabbos in public. And this makes him a Mumer for Kola Terukul. Amul Rav Nachman. So Rav Nachman asked him, Come on, whose sheet are you following here? That you maintain that merely being a Mumer for one specific thing, for Chil Shabbos, already makes him a Mumer for the entire Torah. Iker Rav Meir. Are you following sheet as Rav Meir? The Amar. Choshel Dover Echad. If a person is suspect of one thing, you know that he's over habitually on, on one Avir. Choshel Dover Echad. Kula. That makes him suspect of all other things as well. He's not to be trusted for anything else. So according to our mayor, <laughs> the concept of mummer applies not only to a mechal shavuz for hesed, even if he's a mummer for any other iser. Once he is a chashet, you know that he's not trusted for any iser. That makes him not trustworthy for anything. For kol kula. Why do you specifically single out shavuz? Ikra banan. Are you following Shittas Rabbanon? Ha'amri, haven't they said, Choshel Dover Echad, Lo have a Choshel Chal Terukula. A person's Choshel for one thing. He's not considered to be Choshel, suspect of everything else. Ad, to have a Mumer, Lavay Dizkechav. Unless, he's a Mumer for Vayda Zara, which is, something outstanding, and in that case, even the Rabbanon agree, that he's considered to be a Mumer throughout. So, why did you specifically single out, Chilul Shabbos. According to Rav Meir, any Isser would accomplish the same thing. According to Rav they don't hold of that. They hold that a person who's just hushed on one thing, he's not considered to be a mover for anything else. He's still to be trusted for anything else, except for Rabbi Dezara, as Rashi points out. Let's see Rashi up on the top line. Adav al Mumel Dezara. Da'ahu vade chashed al This fellow who's over Rabbi Dezara, indeed, that makes him chashed, suspect of everything. He's not to be trusted for anything. As we learned, Chamur of the Zara, of the Zara is so, is so Chamur. Shekola Moida Boke Kaifu Chalaterukula. One who is Moida of the Zara, he serves of the Zara, it's as though he's denying the entire Torah. It's equated one to the other. The Chsiv Vichisish Kavalei Sasos Kolamit Sasail. Of the Zara, Mr. Krabba Hiris, the Passock describing a person who errs with the Zara, mentions Kolamit Sasail, which implies that that uh, Avedah Zara is equated with the entire Torah. So here the, even the Rabban agree that being a mover for Avedah Zara makes him a mover for everything else. But otherwise, when it comes to other Yisurim, we don't say that. So what's the Shana of Hunu tells us that a person who's a mover to Mechal Shabbos for Hesia, that makes him a mover for the whole Torah. According to our mayor, you don't need to have Shabbos. According to Rabbanon, even Shabbos won't accomplish that. We're not speaking about. Rav Huna was not speaking about giving him the uh, the title of more for the whole Torah. He was specific, specifically speaking about the halacha of bittel. When Rav Huna said Ezo Yisrael Mumer, what he went but what he went was pertaining to bittel. What makes a person a Mumer which disqualifies him from the halacha of bittel rishus on Shabbos? Amar Nachman Yitzchak liten rishus levat rishus. Pertaining to the question of whether he has the ability to give away his rishos to him, his rishos, or the sani as we learned in the price, Yisrael Mumer, Hamashamer Shabbat Abishuk. So this Yisrael Mumer fellow who's who's not being Shemesh Shabbos privately, but he's Meshamer Shabbat Abishuk out in the open. He takes care not to be Chal Shabbos. He's still regarded as Yisrael to the extent that he has a, a, he had the ability to be Mavat rishos. To give away his rishos through bit. However, if he doesn't even keep Shabbos out in the open, he's Machal Shabbos for Hesya. This fellow has totally, totally removed himself from Shabbos. He cannot be Mavatal Rishos. Because the Ham said like this Israel, an ordinary Israel, Noitel Rishos, Venais Rishos. He can be the recipient of, of Bittel, Venais Rishos, and he can give away his rishos. 
or Benachri at Shiaske. But a guy can't do Bittel. Over there, the only option is to rent. If he rents out his Rishus to the Yisrael, then that allows carrying. So we see clearly that when it comes to Yisrael Mumar, it depends. If he's Mishamar Shabbat Bishuk, then he's still, still enabled for, for a Bittel. But otherwise, if he's Mechal Shabbat for Hesya, he's disqualified from Bittel. And indeed, this is all of Huna meant to say. Continues the Brisa. Ketzat. So how does a Yisrael go about doing Bittel? So one Yisrael approaches the other and he says, Look, Rishusi Knuilach. My Rishus is granted to you. Rishusi Mimotelaslach. It's bottled to you. Meaning, I'm relinquishing my usage rights to you. So in either one of these cases, Kana, the recipient acquires the uh, usage rights. Vein Tzorach Lizkois. Or the Zakois. And there's no need to make a Kinyan. Mere words are sufficient. So, getting back to Ravuna's statement, a Mechal Shabbos of Rehesh is considered to be a Mumar. So according to this approach in the Gemara, it was a specific halacha pertaining to Bittu Rishos. This fellow no longer has the privilege to Mivatu Rishos, just as we learned in this price. But pertaining to other halachas, he's not considered to be a Mumar L'chola Terekula, suspect of all other things, because he's only be Mechal Shabbos, and that's only one Avera. In accordance with Shittas Hacham, hold that when a person is chashat for one avera, doesn't make him a chashat for everything else, except for a So Rav Huna was specifically speaking about the halachas of bittel, and indeed, even this type of person, who is a mechal shabbos for hesia, is disqualified from bittel privileges. Rav Ashi Amar has a different approach. Indeed, Rav Huna's statement pertained to chal haterukula, a mumer lechal shabbos for hesia is considered to be suspect pertaining to everything else as well, to Chol HaTerekulu. He has a full din of a mummer. Hai Tanu! Rav Huna was following the opinion of the following Tana. The Chamira Alei Shabbos Kavadizara, who considers Shabbos to be as stringent, he equates it to Tavadizara. And just as we know that, according to the Chachamim, even according to the Chachamim, when he's mummer of Tavadizara, he's considered to be mummer for everything else. According to the following Tana, Shamas is regarded and equated like a Vaitazar. And therefore, if this person is Mechal Shabbos Bifar Hesya, he's considered to be a Mumar Lechol Hatoyrakul. Where do we find this sheet? Okay, the Sanya, as we going to Enterprise. Mikem, this is the Pasta, right in the beginning of Parshat Vayikra, which says, Adam ki Yaakov Mikem Karban Lashem. If a person from amongst you, Mikem, from you, who we make a carbon is speaking about uh, the Dharam, the Dovis, voluntary carbonates. So the Bryce of is as follows. Mikem, from amongst you, the Loi Kulcham, not all of you, can bring a carbon. Pratla Mumar. It's coming to exclude a Mumar. A habitual transgressor. He can't bring a carbon. Continues the Bryce. Mikem, Bochem Chilakti Loi Bomas. The fact that the Pasuk, Mikam, which excludes a Mumar, is, is uh, discussing Kal Yisrael. And the Torah here tells us that we're meant to exclude a Mumar. That indicates that we're not, we're not meant to exclude the Umar, the Goyim. They're excluded from this miyot of Mumar. So you know, do a various, they can bring, they can still bring a carbon, a carbon and a double. So, Mikem, from amongst you, Bachem Chilakt. This Chiluk I made amongst you, strictly amongst Kalash of Boomers. But not amongst the Goyim, they can bring a carbon. Any one of them can offer a carbon, nether on a double. Continues the Brysa. The Pasuk says, Mina Behema. So, if a person will bring a carbon, Mina Behema, the Drush is Lahavi to include Bene Adam Hadoyman Behema. Even people who are similar to Behemoths, they're showing, they can bring a bonus. Mikan Amru. This is the source of the following statement, Mekhablin Karbonites Mi Pashi Yisrael. We accept Karbonites even from the Pashi Yisrael. So in order that they do Tshuva, we don't want to push them away and reject them. Chutz, Mena Mumar, Uva Mena Sachyayim, from Mechal Shabbos Varhes. These three, we don't accept Karbonites from. A Mumar, one who pours wine for the Vedizara, 
or a person with Mechal Shabbos of hers. This price seems to be inherently difficult. There's a steer mine obeyed. Because first you say, Amrus, Mikam, Vale Kulchem, like says Amumr. The price begins by excluding a Mumr. Mikam teaches us, Vale Kulchem, not from all of you, exclude a Mumr. Father Tani, then the price proceeds and says, Mikam, Kabbalah, Zip, Pashi Yisrael. We do accept from Pashi Yisrael. So which one is it? Do we accept from the Mumr or not? It says more like Kash. The answer is as follows. It depends to what extent. He's a Pesheya. Reisha b'mumar l'chalat ha'rekula. The Reisha is excluding mumar, speaking bad. A general mumar. He's a mumar, he's over the chalat ha'rekula. And therefore he's excluded from kabbanis. Mitziyasa b'mumar l'chavar echad. The next part of the b'risa, which indicates that we do take a carbon from a, a mumar, speaking bad. He only transgresses, he's a mumar for one specific thing. He's not a general mumar for the chalat ha'rekula. Therefore, we accept the carbonus from him. Okay. Ema Seifa. Let's proceed to the last part of the price. Chutz mina mumar. We want to exclude mumar. Now, what type of mumar are we speaking about? Hai mumar heichadami. What type of mumar are we speaking? E mumar chal tera. Hanuresha. Are we speaking of one who transgresses chal tera kula? Therefore, he's excluded. Hanuresha. This is the exact same halachas in the Rasha. We already spoke about that. Why the repetition? Yiludavar echad. If we're speaking about he's only a local mummer for one of and we don't accept his carbon, kasha mitziyasa. So now we have a kasha from the middle portion of the b'risa, which tells us that a mummer l'dover echad does have carbon as rights. So we have a stira within the b'risa. El alav hachikamer. Apparently, the last portion of the b'risa means to say as follows. Chutz min ha-mummer l'nasach yayin when the Brisa mentioned Mumar, Brisa wasn't placing Mumar in its own category as a standalone description. Rather, it was describing the following two cases that the Brisa listed. A Mumar l'nasachiyayin, somebody who habitually does nisachiyayin, does avay desar, or a Mumar l'chal shabbas farhesi. So, it's only specifically these cases that the Brisa is referring to. Not a general Mumar, and it's very consistent with the previous portions of the Brites, which told us that unless a person is a mumul chal kula, he can still bring a carbon. The Brites here is adding to us that a mumur from a desara or chal shabbos are equated with mumul chal kula due to their severity. It's considered as though he's a mumul chal kula. Says the Gemara Alma, apparently, avay desara v'shabbos ki adad inin We have a right from here. That indeed, Avedazar and Shabbos are equated one to the other. And just as a mumal Avedazar is considered like a mumal Chater Kula, likewise, a person who is a mumal to Mechal Shabbos is Bifar Hesse, which is a public negation of Shabbos, which, is, which touches the core of our Emunah. It's equated to Avedazar, and he too is considered like a mumal Chater Kula and is excluded from Kabbalah. So in summary, we accept the Karbanis, the Durham, and the Dabais from the Goyim, from Pashi Yisrael, provided that he's not a Mumar L'chal Terakula, or a Mumar L'Abed Zorah, or a Mumar L'chal Shabbos Farhesya. And now getting back to the statement of Rav Huna, who told us that if a person is Mechal Shabbos Farhesya, he's considered to be a Mumar, we have two approaches. According to the first approach in the Gemara, that was a specific point regarding Bittel privileges. This fellow loses his uh, Bittel Rishus privileges. He cannot be Matal Rishus on Shabbos. According to the second portion of the Gemara, Rav Huna was referring to a general term of Mumel Chal Terkula. Why is that? Because a person who is Mechal Shabbos for Hesia, it's as though he is doing Avedi Zara, he's a Mumel Avedi Zara, in which case, according to all Shittas, even according to the Rabbanon, who disagrees with Rameir over there, in this case, he's considered to be a mumal chalter kula, and he's not to be trusted for anything. Continues the mission. Anshe chatzor, sheshachach echad mehem v'leiriv. The mission here will go into the details of bittel, and the assumption here is that when a person is mavatel, is mavatel the, the usage right says chatzor, not to his home. So we have people in the chatzor, anshe chatzor, sheshachach echad mehem v'leiriv. 
So they made an error of one, one with the other. And one of them forgot to uh, participate in the Erev. And he does bittel. So he relinquishes his usage rights uh, you know, to the Chatzar. So what happens now? It says the Mishnah, Beisoy, Asur Malahachnes Malahitzi, Loyulam. What about transferring in and out of his home? From the Chatzar to the house, from, from the house to the Chatzar. Is that mutter or not? It says the Mishnah, it's Asur. Beisoy, Asur Malahachnes Malahitzi, Loyulam. He can't do that because should he go transfer from his house to the Chatzar, it would appear as though he's taking back usage rights of the Chatzar. He's regaining uh, possession of the Chatzar. So he can't do that. Likewise, they can't do that either because it's his home. He never relinquished usage rights to his home. It remained solely his possession and designated to him. Therefore, they can't go ahead and transfer from that house, which is his private property, to the Chatzar, which is a shared usage area. So his house is off limits for all. What about their homes? Can one transfer from their homes to the Chatzar? Why not? Vishalahem, Mutar, and Loyulahem. They can certainly transfer. And he as well. Because he's like, a, he's like their guest. Once he relinquishes rights to the Chatzar, he's considered like an Eirech towards them. He's like their guest. Therefore, he can go ahead and transfer from their house to the Chatzar as well. It doesn't appear as though he's trying to repossess the Chatzar to take back his usage rights. He's merely their guest. And therefore, he can go ahead and transfer from their houses to the Chatzar. Mutar, Mutar and Loi, Ulam. And they can do so as well. Let's take a look at Rashi. Off to the left, beginning with the word Masnis. So we're speaking about a person who forgot to be mishtatif in the Erev, and he does bittel. Says Rashi, You can't transfer from the home to the chatzar. Neither he can, nor they. The Gemara will explain, We're speaking where he was mevatel to them, the rishus that he had in the chatzar, but, he didn't give up the Rishustas of his house. Hilkach, Havali Rishus Pesay, Rishus Tidei. Therefore, his home remained his private possession, his personal space. The Chatzar Rishus Tidu. And the Chatzar is there, is their area. Therefore, they can't go ahead and transfer in and out of his house. And certainly he can't do so because it would appear as though he's trying to take back the rights of the Chatzar. That's regarding his house. Vishalahem, Batim Shalahem, their homes. Mutaran, Lohitzi Man Lachatzer, you can transfer in and out of those homes. Bain who, whether this person, Bain him, whether uh, them. The Hobat Shalam Lachatzer, Rosh Hashachsen, their homes and the Chatzer are simply one and the same entity. And therefore, there's no concern whatsoever. Can here's the Mishnah. Nosnu Loy Rishusim. What if things happen just the opposite? Instead of he being mevatel to them, they decide to mevatel their usage rights in the chatzah to him and make him the sole property owner of the entire chatzah. So what, what happens now regarding transferring to and from homes? Who mutter? So he's allowed to transfer in and out of his home. They not certain. But they cannot do so. So regarding their homes, that's certainly off limits. Off limits to anybody. Because, as we explained earlier, they never gave away the rishis of their homes. They were about the rishis of their chatzar to him. But the homes remained solely theirs. So you can't go ahead and transfer from their home, which is their personal property to the chatzar, which is now his property. So it's off limits for him. And likewise, they themselves can't transfer from their homes to the chatzar because it would appear like they're regaining rights to the chatzar. So their homes in this situation are totally off, off limits. The question is regarding his home. So who, Mutter, he can go ahead and transfer in and out of his home because the chatz is considered, considered to be his. The house is his. So why can't he transfer? But they cannot transfer. They want to explain because since there are a multitude, there are two, three, four, five people here, it doesn't appear like they're his guests. 
And therefore, if they would transfer from his home to the Chatzar, or from the Chatzar to his home, it would appear as though they're trying to regain their rights in the Chatzar. So therefore, they can't, they can't transfer in that even of his home. Says the Mishnah, Hoyushnayim. Let's say they did bittel to two people. <laughs> Instead of doing bittel only to one person, they gave their rishos to two people. Now these two people didn't make an Arab, one with the other. So we have a problem on our hand. They make each other asr. <laughs> because, fine, they became the property owners, but amongst themselves, they need an Arab. So since there's no Arab, they're asr on each other to carry in the chatz. Explains the Mishnah. She'echad naisun rishos. One person can give away his rishos to others. And likewise, he can be the recipient of the bittel. He can accept rishos because he's on his own. And he becomes the sole property of the owner. However, shnayim, nice rishos. Two people can give away the rishos. Very nice rishos, but they can't accept rishos. Meaning they can give away the rishos to a single person to have him become the sole property owner. But they can't be the recipients of bittel. Because since they didn't make an error amongst themselves, they become joint, joint owners of this um, property and they interfere with each other. Continues the Mishnah. What's the, um, the deadline? What's the latest? That you can give Rishos, that you can do Bethel. It needs to be done while it's still day on Erev Shabbos. Because just like Erev, like becomes activated in Ashmashas, it needs to be done before Shabbos. It can be done even after nightfall. Because you're just relinquishing your Rishos. That doesn't need to be done during Ashmashas. Continues the Mishnah. If one gave away his Rishos, meaning he did Bittal, and then he was Moitzi, he transferred from his house to the Chatzah, which he's not meant to do. Rame holds. Whether this happened with Shagig or Bemezid, we consider it as though he reacquired possession of the Chatzar and terminated the Bittal. And therefore, makes it Asr upon the other members of the Chatzar. And as the Gemara discussed earlier, Ramey applies a Knas by Shagig or to Mezid. Because if we'll be lenient by Shagig, perhaps we'll be lenient by Mezid as well. Therefore, we make it Asr by Shagig on account of Mezid. Rabbi says no. Rabbi Daimer, Bemezid, Aisir. If it happened with Mezid, you're right. He's Aisir. B'shoigig, ene oiser, he does not affect Iser him. So the mission began by describing this person who lived amongst others in a chatzar. They established an Erev, and he didn't take part. So then he went ahead and he did bittel to them. The mission tells us, as a result of this bittel, they can transfer throughout the chatzar, but they cannot transfer in and out of his house. His house is off limits. Ask the Gemara. Be'iso yudas. So his house is Asr for them. But his chatzar is mutter. How can you differentiate? Hey, chidami, what are you speaking about? Eat the bottle. Did he do bittel? So why is his house asr? He gave it all away to them. Eat the bottle. He didn't do bittel. Chatzar my sharia. So why is his chatzar mutter? Says the Gemara, my skin, I was speaking about when she bittel was just He gave away the rishis of his chatzar. For the bittel was just basic, but did not relinquish the Rishus of his house. Because Havra Rabban, Rabban hold, Hamavata Rishus Chatzeroi, when one is Mavatal, the usage rights to his Chatzer, Rishus basically Bittal. It doesn't necessarily mean that he also included the Rishus of his house. The dire Inish, the bias for the Chatzer, a person can live perfectly well in a house, even if it doesn't have a Chatzer, it's not so practical, it's not so convenient, but it's doable. So we assume that although he gave up the usage rights of his chatzar, but he still maintained the usage rights of his home. So that's Rishan the Mishnah. This person gave up Rishus Chatzar. So now it allows them to carry throughout the chatzar. But his home still remains his. It's his private property. And therefore they cannot transfer in and out of his home. Now the Mishnah continued and said, in this case where he was Mavata to them, their homes are accessible. V'shalahen mutar loyvalahen. He could, and they could, transfer in and out of those homes. My timer. Why? Why could he 
transfer in and out of those homes. Meaning, he cannot transfer in and out of his home because it's going to appear as though he's trying to reacquire his usage rights in the Chatzar. That's off limits. It's off limits to him and certainly off limits to them as we just discussed because it's his private property. But the mission tells us that their homes are perfectly accessible, loyal to him. Not only loyal to them, but also to him. Why? How could he transfer in and out of those homes? Doesn't it appear as though he's, he's trying to regain possession of the chatzah? Says, well, my time and why? Because he's considered merely like a guest by them. He's their guest. So that explains why he's transferring in and out of their homes. He's, he's just a visitor. He's a guest. It doesn't appear as though he's trying to regain possession of the chatz. Continues the Gemara. What about in the second case? Where they did bittle to him. Nosnu loy rishusan. Hu mutar So now regarding their homes, it's totally off limits. Because, as we just mentioned, when a person does bittle, he holds on to his home. So their homes are still considered to be their private property. And he cannot transfer in and out of those homes. Nor can they, because it would appear as though they're trying to regain the, the property rights to the chatz. So their homes are off limits. Regarding his home, the mission says, Who mutter? He can transfer in and out of his home. But they cannot. Says the more, why is this different than the previous case? Why can't they be considered like his guests, which would allow them to transfer in and out of his home? Just as we said when he was about to them, he's allowed to transfer in and out of their homes because he's like their guest. So why is this different? Why can't they be considered his guests? Let us consider them as his guests. Says what is the difference? Yeah. One person to five is considered a guest. There is host. But five people are not considered to be one person's guests. And they, they appear like they're, they're trying to regain possession. When they go ahead and they transfer in and out of his home, it doesn't appear like they're his guests. It's a multitude of people. They, they just here to use the chatzar and they're regaining, reacquiring their possession, rights to the chatzar. So that explains the discrepancy between the first case of the mission and the next case. Continues the Gemara. It would appear, the Gemara assumed at this point that the, um, the mission here is describing one continuous story. Initially, he was unvato to them, and then they turned around and they were unvato to him. Shmamino, apparently, we conclude from here, Mevatan, Vachaizan, Mevatan. You can do a double bittle. You can do a bittle one way, and then do the bittle back. This will be a kasha to Shmuel, who holds this can't be done. He says, well, no, we're not speaking about one and the same case. We're talking about two different scenarios. Hachikama. This is what the mission means to say. Nasna Rishusan me kara. If initially they gave him their Rishus, meaning it's a, it's a different story altogether. The mission began by describing him being mevatel to them. Then the Mishnah went on to the next case, another story. If they decided to give their shus to him, who mutar ve nasurin, he's allowed to transfer in and out of his home, and they can't, as we just explained the Gemara. So it's unrelated to the halach of mevatel, mechaz mevatel, we're not speaking about a, uh, a, a bittel one way, and then another bittel the other way. We're speaking about two different situations, unrelated stories. The Mishnah tells us, how you shnayim, if the bittel was done to two people, they were the recipients of the bittel, make each other usher, because there's no heir amongst them. So they're now the joint property owners, but <laughs> there's no heir to allow them to carry in this chatzah. So what pshita is, isn't that obvious? We already know that two people living in a chatzah need an heir. Lloyd Srich apparently was speaking about a case, the Hadar Chad Minayu, who bought the Leila Chavri, that after the other members of the Chatzar did bittle to these two fellows. So we have Reuven and Shimon. Afterwards, Reuven transferred everything to Shimon. He took whatever he got from the other people and he gave it over to Shimon. He did bittle to Shimon. So now Shimon is the sole property owner. Maudet Tema, perhaps I think, Lishtari. He's allowed to carry in the Chatzar because there's nobody interfering. Kamash Malon. Mission tells us no. It's not going to help. He cannot use the chutz. Why? The kivan the be'idna 
the bottom, because since at that point in time when the other Bnei Chasa, who would be Mevatal there is just to Reuven and Shimon. Lo Yehav, Lo Yishav Yusabai Chatzar, Reuven had no heter Shimash in his Chatzar. He couldn't practically use the Chatzar. Let's remember, he had Shimon at his side. And they had no Erev between them. So even if he turns around and transfers everything that he got from the other members over to Shimon, making him his sole property owner, that won't work. Because, practically speaking, he never really had used his rights to the Chatzar. He doesn't have what to give over. Why? That's why it doesn't work. That's the Chesh of the Mishnah here. When the other members, Amavatal, they were just Reuven and Shimon, who had no error amongst themselves. So even if Reuven turns around and gives everything over to Shimon, it won't work. Continues the Gemara. Shecha Nesin Rishos. The Mishnah concludes, because one person can give away his Rishos and receive Rishos. Two people can give away, but they can't receive if there's no error amongst them. That's Gemara so longly. Why do we need this additional clause in the Mishnah? We already know this from the halachas in the, in the beginning of the Mishnah. Inoisen Tanina. Whether it's the halach of the Yochad giving away the Rishos, we already learned that. In the first case in the Mishnah, he gave his Rishos to the others. Inoitel, whether it's the halach that he can receive Rishos, Tanina. That also we learned in the second case of the Mishnah that the others gave him uh, their Rishos. So why this repetition? Seifat Srichalei, it's the next portion of the Mishnah, which is the Chedashir. Shnaim Naisen Rishos, two people can give away their Rishos. Hanami Pshita. This is also obvious. Why would I think otherwise? Well, the thing, perhaps I would think that we shouldn't allow two people to give away Rishos. Ligzar, it should be room for Xer, that if we allow them to give away, Dilma Asilif Tulilahu, perhaps others will give their Rishos to them. Two people will be the recipients of Bittal, which is a problem because they don't have no Erev. So perhaps we shouldn't allow two people to give away either. Kamashma and the Chilish is, we don't have this concern. And we allow two people to give away the Rishos. So they can give, but they can't receive because there's no error amongst them. Lomali. Why, why this repetition? The Mishnah already told us that if there were two people in the Chatzar who have no error between themselves, they cannot be the recipients of Bittal. So why this repetition? So the Mishnah apparently was speaking about Afagav the Amrile, even in the case where the Bnei Chatzar told them specifically. So we have the Bnei Chatzar transferring their Rishos to Reuven and Shimon, and they approached Reuven and they told him, look, our portion that we're giving you here is not meant to stay by you. Kni, acquire it, Almanas Lachnis, on condition that you pass it on to Shimon. So perhaps this system would work. In contrast to the earlier case where we said he can't transfer anything because he never really acquired anything. He was never allowed to use the Chatzar because he had interference from Shimon, so he never acquired anything to pass on. Perhaps this case is different because they specifically told him, look, you're not defining this destination. You're just taking it to transfer it over to Shimon. So perhaps the fact that Reuben himself can't make use of this chatzar at this point is irrelevant. It's merely a transfer point to Shimon. Perhaps this situation would work. Now that he transferred it to Shimon, Shimon now acquires sole ownership of the chatzar and can transfer throughout the chatzar. And the chadish is, no, even in this case it won't work because Reuben really didn't get anything to transfer to Shimon because what he got is not useful. He can't use it. And therefore, we don't consider as though he got anything and he cannot transfer it to Shimon as well. So in summary, regarding the halacha of Bittal Rishus, where one relinquished the Rishus of his chatzah, but not the Rishus of his home, Mishra provides us with three examples. When a yachad was mevatal to a rabbin who had an Erev, his house is totally off limits. They can't transfer in and out because it's his private property. Likewise, he can't do so because it would appear like he's regaining possession of his chatzah. He's allowed to transfer in and out of their homes because he's merely their guest. When a rabbin, a mevatel to a yachid, he's allowed to transfer in and out of his home, but they can't, because they don't appear like his guests, and they appear like they're trying to regain possession of the chatzah. Their homes are completely off limits. They can't transfer in and out, because it would appear like they're regaining possession of the chatzah. He can't do so, because it's their private property. When others are mevatel to two people, it won't work. Even if they conditioned with Reuven, you can go transfer everything over to Shimon. It won't work because at the point when he acquired it, it wasn't useful to him. And he had nothing that he acquired in order to transfer further. Okay, let's review today's daf. We began with three machlekes between Ramei and Rabbi Yudha. Number one, the case of Machal Shabbos or Farhesi. Ramei says he could be Mavato. Rabbi says he can't. When a person was Mavato and then he was Moitzi, he took something out into the Chatzar. If he does a Bishagik, Ramei says he's Oisir. Rabbi says he doesn't. In the case where he was Mavatal and the recipient was Machzik, 
And then the Mavatal decided to use the area, according to Rav Meir, he doesn't do any harm. According to Rav Yudah, even in this case, he is Isa. We learned that we have Makabal Kabarnas and Dava from Goyim, from the Yisrael provided that he's not a Mumal Chalat or a Kula, Avidazor or Machal Shabbos of Hesse, and we concluded with an in depth discussion of the Halachos of Bitorishes.